Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is the video or device I've been waiting to get for a, a long time. Really excited. Xiaomi kindly sent me out the Mi 11 Ultra. Now they sent me out only the phone, so there's no uh, proper box or charger or cable or anything like that. So this is just going to be a first look at the actual device. I'm going to test the camera a bit as well. You know, see what we see what we've got there. But also, I want you to check out the, the Me community as well. It's a fantastic uh, community forum, support for loads of different sort of uh, Xiaomi devices as well in there. You've got plenty of support forums as well. Go and check that out in the description below. And without further ado, here it is. This is the box it came in. This is not what any retail packaging uh, experience will be like. This is just um, from Xiaomi themselves. They sent me this ceramic white because that's what I asked for. <sighs> goodness. Oh my goodness. So uh, this is going to retail around about a thousand pounds, I believe. Um, a ceramic back. Gorilla Glass Victus on the front. The main talking point, and possibly main selling point, is this camera right here and that camera but see that that's quite exceptional never seen a bump like it it's a triple camera setup you can see 120 times zoom there this is also a display there which um we'll test out in a moment we can get a, a better look at that but the large 50 megapixel sensor on the rear the main the main sensor so I've got big hands, a bit dry hands actually. Um, there we go. 6.81 inch quad HD display. It's AMOLED and it also has adaptive refresh rate. So all the way from 30 to 120 Hertz refresh rate as well. And this feels so smooth and silky in the hand. It's slightly thicker than the Redmi Note 10 Pro, which I'm still using by the way. I haven't gone back to my Pixel 5. I'm uh, really liking the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Unfortunately, I've got to send this Mi, Mi 11 Ultra back. <laughs> at the top, there we have an IR blaster. Loudspeaker at the top there as well, a microphone. So similar setup to what we have on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Although there's no headphone jack on the Mi 11 Ultra. And to be honest, there's not one at the bottom, is there? No. And to be honest, they could have fit one in. You know, it's a phone this thick, it's thicker than the Redmi Note 10 Pro. They could have squeezed a headphone jack in there, and for some reason they haven't. A little bit disappointing. So go down to the bottom, um, SIM tray, so it accepts a nano SIM, USB type C, a loudspeaker there as well, and a microphone. We can compare that to the bottom of the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Similar sort of setup. So on the side, volume rocker and power. The power button is slightly textured as well. There's a nice texture to it. Not too much of a click either, which is good. And on this side, it's absolutely clear. So I just want to turn this beauty on. Here we go. So it's powered by the latest Snapdragon 888, 888. And it goes up to 12 gigabytes of RAM, I believe, as well. 256 gigabytes of internal storage. And it's 5G as well. You can see the 5G there at the bottom. 5G ready. Superb. So I'm going to quickly set this up. Well, here, look, you can see the screen. Sort of. Thicker bezels at the corner there, it's kind of curved, isn't it? And then on the side slightly, let's take a look, bit closer look at that. The sort of curved um, corners there, you can see. So not, not end to end. Okay, let me set this up and I'll be back. Here she is, all set up, installed a couple of apps. I've tested the camera out as well, set up fingerprint sensor. Um, let me just, Take you a little bit closer to this gorgeous, glossy display. 
really reflective. Obviously, incredible and amazing viewing angles. Look at that. So this is 120 hertz. Super, super smooth. I'll show you the settings and all of that in a moment. Uh, yeah, absolutely blown away at the moment. Let's look at it. That nice little display there on the back. It's got the time. It's also got the uh, battery indicator there as well. Let me show you the fingerprint sensor because it is in screen as well. So let's start let's sort of like that. It is fast. I'm personally not a fan of in-screen fingerprint sensors, um, mainly because I'm trying to find the actual location. Like that is a little bit of a pain in the bum. Uh, but it's fast and it seems responsive. So that's good. You've also got um, always on display as well. There you can just see that. You can set the uh, the different designs as well. I've got a little clock there as well, which shows the notification there at the bottom. There's all any notifications you may have. So that's cool. You can see the fingerprint sensor there. And there we go. That is quick. So I've opted for the app drawer setup. You can go for the classic pages with the apps all across there, but I do prefer a nice app drawer. So I've opted for that. I'll quickly show you a few of the settings because this is just a quick sort of first look. There is NFC available in here, but I jumped straight to the display options. You have light mode, dark mode, um, but the main thing was display resolution. You can set that yourself. You can set down to FH, FHD plus, full HD plus. Obviously that's going to preserve battery life. There's an option there which helps you switch resolution automatically to save power. You can have that on or off. Let's just turn that off. I don't want to save power for the moment. Oh, I'll just turn that way. There we go. I want the full experience. So, look, 120 hertz refresh rate, quad HD. This has got an AI image engine. So, there's super resolution. You can enhance your videos. So, it upscales the resolution of videos. Pretty cool feature. AI image enhancement, HDR enhancement as well, and MEMC so it adds additional frames to make your footage look even smoother. Now I do believe, I do I'm not about believing actually. Don't skip to job, but dark mode. It just looks so much better on camera, doesn't it? The black and stuff. Look how smooth that is. Yeah, absolutely amazing, it really is. So as some of you may know, if you can just see that there, it says sound by Harmon Carden, okay? Uh, this is all about. I just need to buffer that a little bit. You can just see that there etched into the top of the phone. Let's test these speakers out then, because I'm sure we're gonna have a splendid experience with sound. Okay, we are here, are you ready? It is around 50%. Oh, no. Dance. One thing I want to check is whether there's you know equal power to each loudspeaker. There's one at the bottom here. Let's turn this right up. Wow, that sounds incredible for a smartphone. That's the bottom. And that's the top. vocals. That's crystal clear guys. Well wow, those are the best loudspeakers I've heard on a smartphone. Absolutely. Sound by Harman Kardon. Some nice, rich, low end in there in both loudspeakers. Equal amount of power from both. Same, kicking out the same frequencies. Beautiful. Really is. Clarity. 
perfect. Okay, so I'm about to play some YouTube footage. It's actually 8K Ultra HD HDR 60 FPS. Now the actual resolution on the Mi 11 Ultra is 1440p. So it's 3200 by 1440. And when we have a look at some of the settings here, we have available on this video, we can actually view up to you know, 4K 2160, uh, but we're gonna keep it at 1440, 60 frames per second HDR, uh, which is the actual screen resolution as well. And providing I've got a decent enough Wi-Fi connection, we should better stream this nicely and should better set a nice look at that beautiful, beautiful display. So this is an ultra impressive display on the Mi 11 Ultra, 1440p resolution, 120Hz refresh rate, it is adaptive though as well, so we may not be experiencing 120Hz here at the moment. definitely get in a tremendous display experience. Look at that. And my Wi-Fi buffering is pants. How dare you. Look at that. Okay, so let's talk about probably one of the main key points really this camera setup and that nice little rear display there it's displaying the time and date and battery percentage there at the moment you can just see that right there so we have a main 50 megapixel sensor we also have a 48 megapixel periscope telephoto and a 48 megapixel ultra wide okay so it's a triple camera setup the front facing camera there, the top left hand corner, you can just see that. That's a 20 megapixel front facing camera. It's f2.2 and it does feature HDR and panorama modes. In terms of video, you can shoot at 1080p, 60 frames per second in video and there's image stabilization as well. And that's actually electronic image stabilization. Back onto the rear, you can shoot up to 8K, 24 frames per second. And there is stabilization on there as well in the camera settings. So let me quickly show you now the, some of the, the camera settings in here. Let's go straight to video. All right, we can see that right there, okay. Um, so if you go into 8K, 24 frames per second and go into settings, image stabilization is not grayed out, so that is available. HDR 10 plus, is that, that's turned on. HDR 10 plus in 8K as well, that's great. 4K 60 you can shoot up to, 1080p 60 as well, and 720p 30. I don't even know why they bother including that anymore. Need to get rid of that. You can also shoot in uh, macro mode as well by, by turning that on. So 4K 60 is probably one of the, maybe one of the more popular choices people were choosing. So yeah, image stabilization is still on and HDR 10 plus. I wanted to clear that up because in the, the Redmi Note 10 Pro, there's no stabilization in 4K 60. If we switch back to photo mode, and if we click that there, there is a display preview button there, a rear display. And if we spin it round, you'll see, oh, that's on the rear, isn't it? Yeah. So the rear camera, you can see the display there. Let's just chuck a bottle of water under there. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, like you can just see my face now. I'm not 
So I can look at that and take a selfie from there, which is pretty cool. Now, the, the thing I've found out, uh, the display is actually from a Mi Band display, which is pretty cool. But this actual display, the display preview there, is only available in picture mode. So if you want to go into video mode and go into there, that's actually not available. So for the moment, maybe until updates are released or, or any sort of features uh, are updated and added, you can only go into photo mode and display preview. Portrait mode, I think that's the same issue. Yeah, so it's just in photo mode you get the, uh, the little preview. But, you know, photos with the impressive rear camera should be good. So another thing I need to show you, if you click on more there, we have plethora of settings here. You have the 50 megapixel sensor setting as well. So at the minute we're on the 50 megapixel lens, the main sensor. If you click there, you don't get the preview screen either. So you can't use it in 50 megapixel um, option. So it's just standard photo. And we can go ultra wide look, and it's still the 50 megapixel on there as well. So I have been playing around, obviously, with photos and videos, and this is what I've found. So I'm super impressed with the image sensor. This is a 50 megapixel sensor photo. Beautiful sharpness, colors, absolutely incredible photo quality. I then switched to ultra wide while I was in the 50 um, megapixel settings as well. And that's the ultra wide shot. You can see that again is still very nice. I'm zooming right in here. It's really, 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 really good. And I went outside. This is again a 50 megapixel sensor shot. Plenty of detail. Color is absolutely great. Image quality is brilliant. So again, this is another 50 megapixel sensor shot. Uh, the detail in the clouds are really nice. Dynamic ranges are looking good. Color accuracy is spot on. This is a really, really nice, clean image. And then I switched ultra wide as well. And look at that, really impressive. So I turned off the 50 megapixel sensor mode for this one. So this is just a normal natural photo, which is looking pretty nice, quite vibrant. It's like a portrait mode sort of um, you know, bokeh effect because the background is slightly blurred, but that is just standard. Uh, this is actually a portrait mode and this looks super impressive, doesn't it? Absolutely beautiful shot there. Everything detailed and in focus for the subject. And obviously the background is nicely blurred, nice and soft. Now you can click it and adjust the blur effect. So I can bring it down all the way to F16, or all the way down to F1. And then obviously it's gonna be a little bit more blurry, but it still looks really, really nice. So this is a video 1080p, 60 frames per second. So this is 1080p, little mighty coffee. This looks amazing on this display. Where are you going? <laughs> You don't want to play. There's image stabilization on here. Look at the detail in the clouds. It's quite stunning. Stabilization in 1080p. I'll do 4K in my full review. But wow, it looks super impressive. Let's try zooming in. Zooming in. That's five times zoom. Let's go six times zoom in the video. Let's come out. Wow. So, so good. This is indoors 1080p 6D. So, obviously, not outside. Slightly darker indoors. My little one, your little face. Are you doing? What are we doing? <laughs> Look at you. Smile. 
Smile. I'm playing Roblox. <laughs> yeah. Leave me alone. Daddy. You, how, how are you finding your phone Daddy. anyway? The Umi Digi Bison. Is it good? Daddy. Yeah? Daddy. Yeah. Oh, God, I nearly fell over. You nearly fell over on the now. I know, I nearly hit the the D-bot. Yeah, he would be angry. He would be angry, yeah. So this is the 20 megapixel selfie camera on the Mi 11 Ultra. It's done a decent job there. Colour accuracy seems to be pretty good. A little bit red in the cheeks there, which I sometimes am. Uh, but in terms of detail, quality, it's really, really good. It's impressive. And then switch to bokeh. And again, look. Great capture, colour accuracy is spot on, great colours, nice amount of detail and again you can click that and you can change the uh, the bokeh settings as well if you wish, entirely up to you. So this is a front facing video 1080p at 60 frames per second, have a look at this. Front facing video 1080p 60 frames per second, there is stabilisation on as well. This is arm's length. And this is quite a cropped in um, sensor or lens. So you're going to really need to have it at arm's length, really. God, the sun is beaming down today. What do you guys think to that? Let's go in quickly. In. How's that looking now? That's looking good as well. Very stable. I just want to quickly cover this movie effects. Um, seen this advertised on uh, their launch event as well. There's magic zoom, zoom, slow shutter, time freeze, night time lapse, the parallel world as well. I did actually experiment with the parallel world video. Have a look at that. Wow. This parallel world. It's really trippy. So there is multicam settings. Click on that. Activates pretty much every single camera on there. And you can choose which cameras you want active in multicam. So we can have the one times or 0 0.5 times and the front camera. We click that. So now we have the front camera and the rear camera on at the same time, which is a pretty neat tool. So that is it. A good look at um, the Mi 11 Ultra. First sort of impressions, um, absolutely blown away. I mean, look at this smooth scrolling, 120 hertz refresh rate. But like I keep saying, it is adaptive as well, so it might not be Currently that at this moment in time, but look, that is really, really smooth. Absolutely impressed with the, the camera setup and all the features, uh, which does probably warrant this bit of a, uh, you know, the, the chunky camera around the back there. So it does add a bit of thickness to the device, but it's got some fantastic tech inside there as well. Uh, so that's definitely warranted. The fingerprint sensor seems very good, accurate, accurate and responsive. Uh, the loudspeakers set up, oh, it's simply incredible. The sound quality is really, really top notch. Just absolutely blown away at the moment. I mean, some more specs for you. It's got a 5,000 milliamp battery. It does support wireless charging as well. It's 67 watt fast charging and 67 watt wireless charging as well, I believe. Also supports reverse wireless charging, but that is only at 10 watts, which, you know, absolutely fine. That will definitely work. Um, oh, a couple of fingerprints there on the back, this ceramic back, but it does feel so beautiful in the hand, guys, and looks really, really nice too. So this is the first impressions. I will be doing some gaming on this device, putting it to the test with some high intensive games, a gaming review, and I will come back with a full review as well. Um, yeah, let me know if you want to see anything particular on this device. And I'll see if I include it in the review. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.